right. So it should be obvious, but we'll, we'll just cover it real quickly. Uh, uh, Robert and I are just getting, getting together with you to talk a little bit about uh, phone photography. And so we'll introduce ourselves for you. And we'll talk about a little bit about what we shoot with normally. I say normally when we're not shooting with our uh, phones. And then we'll talk about our uh, equipment when we shoot with our phones. And then we'll talk about some of our pictures. And then we'll go into some of the strengths of phone photography and then some of the challenges of it. And then we'll talk about some more pictures. If you guys have any questions uh, for us, then just uh, interrupt us at the appropriate time and we'll be glad to chat with it. If somebody you can increase the volume on your side, that'd be great. Okay, one second here. How's that? Is that too much? Uh, that's a little better. Yeah, thank you. A little, little more even? That's better. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now set it a little you. closer. Yep. Okay, so I... I shoot. Uh, I shoot most of the time with a SLR. I would probably say I'd shoot uh, not ninety percent of the time with a Canon. I also have a little uh, micro four thirds camera that I shoot. Usually, I shoot at lunchtime with. And then uh, my software flow with my I call it my big camera is typically Lightroom. Uh, the micro four thirds camera does have some built-in software, but I typically uh, don't use it. Uh, I guess my favorite thing to actually shoot is uh, concert uh, music photography, but I will shoot anything. I like landscapes, uh, people, cityscapes, uh, any, anything like that. So that's kind of what I do. Why don't, Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about your typical non-phone shooting? Uh, yeah, I, actually I, got, I started out on a Sony uh, A100, uh, mainly because before that I shot uh, 35 millimeter with Minolta, so I had all the lenses. Uh, but since then, I've updated to a Canon uh, SL1, uh, basically 55 to what is it, 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens and the 75 to 200 for width. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, cell phone. Uh, as far as uh, post production software, uh, mostly from Photoshop Elements, I past few days uh, started dabbling in Lightroom, which is. Um, Similar to Adobe, uh, I'm sorry, Light Zone, which is similar to Adobe Lightroom. So uh, it was a commercial product, and it, uh, the company went out of business, and then um, uh, a couple of folks picked it up and open sourced it. So it's a good product to download. Okay, cool. H uh, how long have you been shooting, Robert? Oh gosh, since let's see, I bought my first my first 35 millimeter. I bought. I was a senior in high school, and I was about to date myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so okay. I started out shooting, uh, shooting film on a little. Uh, I went to a pawn shop. They had one for a hundred dollars. Bought it, and I figured I'm either going to learn how to use this thing, or I'm just going to blow it on and film. And like a couple of rolls later, I kind of got the hang of yeah. it. And then, at the time, I was going to college, and I actually got a degree in audio, video, and music business. And that's why I'm an IT guy. Mm -hmm. A little hard to make, make a living in the area here, but uh, anyhow, so a lot of the video stuff that you learn as far as lighting and all that kind of crossed over to photography. So yeah, yeah. It was a way for me to kind of maintain that. At the time, if you wanted to shoot video professionally, you needed half a million dollars worth of equipment, and now your cell phone can do so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, excellent. And so uh, what's your what's your phone set up like for when you want to shoot uh, photographs with your phone? You... Uh, actually, on, on the phone, I actually... There, there's about three or four different apps that I use. It, it depends on, on what I'm after. Uh, you know, if it's just a quick little, you know, we're going to post something out or to, uh, let's say, a text message, I just use the stock uh, camera software that comes mm -hmm. with it. Uh, I actually have uh, four of the people, or three others that I use. There's one called A Better Camera, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is a camera package. It's, it's, it's kind of cool in that it's it's more, it, it makes it more of a full fetch camera in that you can do um, a little bit of bracketing, you can do, you know, ISO selection. Uh, it also has a built-in level, something that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes looking at a cell phone, you can't, you, it, it's a little bit different when you look at the viewfinder. You can tell pretty easily if your level or not, and the cell mm -hmm. phone is a little harder to read. Right. So this is a feature that overlays a bubble level over your image. It's great. Um, and then uh, there's another one called HDR Camera Plus, which is for HDR photography. Yeah. Uh, the reason I really like that one, I, I played around with several 
person not like it is you could a, a it is true APR it will take three bracket exposure shots and then it'll march them for you it'll also remove ghosting so if you got people moving in the image it will pick the better of the three and give you that one so you don't wind up with ghosting but also once it combines the image it gives you the option to tweak it a little so you have some sliders where you can adjust the saturation the exposure the, the, the contrast uh, so you can do right then and there you can do your editing Okay, cool. very cool. And you're and you're shooting on the uh, you're shooting on the Android, yeah. Operating system. Okay. And what what particular phone do you use? Uh, this is a Samsung Galaxy S4. Okay, great. Okay, great. And then let me grab my phone right quick. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Those are the two that I always go to. But there is uh, there's another one called Camera 360. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's kind of a cute uh, program. It, it has some built-in presets. Uh, that that you can do some uh, you know what I would consider uh, I don't want to say trick photography but uh, basically there's one of the modes in there you can select where you can take a color image and you can uh, a color picture and then decide that the whole picture is going to be black and white except for this one color uh, so it only colorizes that one section of the image okay uh, it it does do pseudo HDR it's actually pretty decent mm -hmm. um, uh, you know but it, it, it you only have an option of like HDR light and HDR heavy. Uh, and basically, that has to do with the amount of saturation that it does. But it does it, it it does an okay job for what I would consider a pseudo HDR image. Okay. Um, you can also have some retro filters and add some enhancements uh, if you want to do. There's a night scene mode, so you can do nighttime photography. Uh, this one is kind of interesting that you can take. Um, it's got a filter in there that you can take a picture and it makes it look like an old timey newspaper. Oh, okay. Okay. Look. So, so again, it's just something to toy around with. Um, Okay. Do you? Uh, uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you do any? Do you do any workflow on the computer within within the same programs you use with your other cameras, or do you do all your post processing in the in the phone? Um, honestly, up until now, I haven't really gotten into post processing unless the image needed it. Okay. Okay. Like you know, it has no makeup. It looks great. Uh, you know, for a while, I I, I got the Photoshop Elements, so if mm -hmm. I had something that I had. You know blemishes or whatever there's a great mm. healing tool that photoshop elements has okay uh, if you're looking for some basic workflow photoshop elements has an option what they call quick edit mode that mm -hmm. basically gets rid of all the advanced tools and it gives you a handful okay uh like for instance uh you want to brighten the sky a little bit you can just sure you know, mask the sky and it'll, it'll do that so sure for the most part that's what i've been doing okay so if you're if you're happy with it in the phone then that's that's typically the way you leave it then yeah pretty much. okay uh, okay and how many? I'm sorry. How many? How many pictures? Uh, I don't know. Week, weekly, or monthly? Do you think you shoot with your phone? Is this a day, daily thing or weekly thing or? The, I'd say probably weekly. The bi-weekly. It just depends mm -hmm. when the opportunity presents itself. Um, uh, like for instance, last uh, weekend I uh, was camping with the Boy Scouts down mm -hmm. in Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, took my SLR camera with mm -hmm. me. I did. Previous camp, and I decided not to take it, and I regretted that. So uh -huh. since then, I decided to do that. So there, I shot 50-50. Um, there was some wildlife there. They had some geese out on the lake, and all that that were pretty far from me. So you know, at that point, okay, get the SLR out, put the telephoto lens, get those nice shots. Mm -hmm. And then there were some areas that were, you know, they looked pretty nice. I wanted to get the shot. My problem was that the sun's in front of me because the sunrise. Well, mm -hmm. that's when I cheat. They'll go, okay, take the cell phone out, let's get HDR camera plus out, take the three pictures, and then mm -hmm. you can adjust it and get that nice shot, and it looks, uh, you know, the way you saw it. Okay. Same thing at sunset sometimes, mm -hmm. to get that that uh, saturation off the water and all mm -hmm. that, that would go. Okay. Um, HDR. As a matter of fact, the, the image is showing up uh, right now, that's from uh, Daisy State Park in Arkansas. Okay. And that's, that is an HDR image that they took. Okay. Uh, it, it was, so, uh, I mainly mm -hmm. did that... Uh, Sorry. No, go ahead. No, oh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. I mainly chose HDR for this image just because I could get that fog to really come through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, HDR means it, it has a couple of definitions, but I think on at least on the iPhone, uh, a lot of times the HDR software kind of takes care of that yourself with the software you're using. Does it actually take three or five exposures and then combine them yes. for you, or is it or is it simply boosting the shadows and Beating the highlights down. 
yeah, Camera 360 will do that. It'll just boost the shadows, take the mm. highlights down, and, mm. and kind of oversaturate the image a little bit, which okay. it, it, some of them look kind of cheesy. Yeah. Uh, HDR Camera Plus, it will take three shots, and, mm -hmm. and you'll see it bracket the shot. There's, you know, you, you, you'll look at it, it'll take the normal shot, it does do mm -hmm. underexpose, and it does do mm -hmm. overexpose. Mm -hmm. Camera takes about, or the, the phone takes about five, ten seconds, then it'll present you the image at that point. Okay. Uh, and, and so basically at that point it's already merged and it's also gotten rid of ghosts in for you. Excellent, excellent. Uh, a question concerning those apps. Uh, one of the so I shoot I shoot iPhone actually, but I, I notice one of the advantages that the Android or the Android phones have are their support of RAW. Are you shooting any RAW? Or are you shooting completely uh, JPEG? Uh, I haven't shot RAW with the, with okay. the mm -hmm. Android yet. Okay. That's that's something I'm kind of working towards. Mm -hmm. uh, I up until recently. I haven't been doing much with raw. Okay. Okay. Just mainly because okay. I didn't have any, any. I was trying. I tried raw therapy for a while, which mm -hmm. was a freebie. Mm -hmm. Uh, in it did all right, but I just wasn't happy with the results. Okay. And, okay. Um, you know, not knowing that Photoshop came with Adobe Camera Raw, it's like, oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. You live and learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well. So yeah. Raw okay. And, um, I don't even know. What's yeah, I, I've seen it. I've seen. I've seen uh, folks mention that in the forums, and I've never looked at it myself. But uh, so before we get before we get into your picture, did you have a qu question or statement there? Sorry to interrupt you. No, I was oh. going to mention I brought up a camera, uh, a better camera, and I mm. forgot to mention it also has a, a feature called Smart Shot. Okay. Uh, which is something you can take a series of pictures, and you can mm -hmm. uh, in Photoshop elements will do this too. They call it recompose. Uh, where well, you can actually eliminate stuff out of the background. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So, so if you want that picture of, of you by yourself in front of mm -hmm. Magic Kingdom Castle type thing, you know, mm -hmm. all day you can do, do that. that. So yeah. It, yep. It it has that. It's got if you're a beginner, it's got the grid. You can do auto white balance. You can select the ISO mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has self timer and time lapse. Okay. Cool. Cool. So I guess I would say my so I actually I actually shoot uh, on the iPhone. Actually, I'm shooting on the iPhone 5s currently, and I. I used to use a lot of applications, but I kind of simplified, I guess about a year ago. And now I'm shooting with an app that's called uh, 645. And really the only reason I chose that app is because it was one of the first applications that support TIFF versus JPEG, which means the, uh, the dynamic range is much better. Unfortunately, the files are also 20 megabytes, which on a phone can become cumbersome getting them on and off. But uh, so, and I guess most of my process, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Of raw, yeah. Yeah, the 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 downside to it is really it it uh, bakes. Of course, it bakes like JPEG. It bakes in the uh, white balance. So you, if you miss the white balance, you're you're it it kind of falls apart on you when you try to correct it in post. I do do some on phone editing with uh, Google's uh, Snapseed. Uh, it's kind of a it's kind of an editor they actually just updated it and it supports layers or other concept it's not really a layer they're just laying it on top of uh, the edits on top of each other so you can do crops and then you convert to black and white or high dynamic pseudo high dynamic high dynamic range where they actually you know uh, push push the shadows up and the highlights down and that type of thing uh, but a lot of my editing I actually do in Lightroom so I will uh, I will actually sync them to my Mac with a with an app called uh, Photo Sync, and get them into Lightroom, and then actually edit them there. And uh, did I ask you how long you've been shooting with the phone? I guess I've been shooting with the phone since iPhone 3GS, which is, I guess, four years now. Did I did I ask yeah, you how I long? Out, let's see, my first smartphone was a you know, it's, they call it the Samsung Infuse 4G. Okay. And uh, I started out with it just using the stock. And mm. um, that's about the time I, I started reading about uh, high HDR photography. And, you know, so I was playing around with my Sony at the time on that. Then uh, somebody turned me on to an app, uh, the, mm. the HDR camera app. I said, check this out. And I said, oh, this, oh, hey, this takes some pretty nice pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably, let's see, uh, that phone now is four or five years. Just, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think I, I I didn't really enjoy the three GS that much because its low light performance was was simply so bad, and they did long shutter speed without any any uh, uh, what do we call it uh, st uh, stabilization. So it was it was kind of rough. Although I did quite you know it was the camera I had with me, and 
I have kids, so anytime, anytime I didn't have a camera with me and the kids were doing something, of course it comes in handy for that. So what don't we, uh, I guess, do we have any questions? Uh, Dina, or Roger, or viewer, viewer number six or seven? Do you guys have any questions concerning what we shoot with, uh, software we're using on the phone? Uh, I've just recently started shooting with iPhone 6 and uh, trying to learn all I can about it. I did not realize there was a way to perhaps uh, uh, shoot raw with the iPhone 6. Is that what I understood you say? Uh, actually, uh, you can actually shoot TIFF, which does give you much better dynamic range with the JPEG. And the, and the, okay. app, the app that I use to do that is called Camera 645. Okay. Now it it cool. Now it actually has a lot more. I don't use a lot of this stuff, but if you're if you like the workflow that Robert's talking about, where you want everything kind of done right there, it has a bunch of it has a black and white filters, it has a square uh, filters. It has it's called 645 because it actually emulates the medium format film size. Uh, of course, I I shoot with the standard phone, which I think is four by five, but I'm not absolutely sure, but. So it, it has a lot more than just what I use it for, because because like I said, I, I like getting my stuff into Lightroom and then and then doing it from there. But it has a lot more, and there are some other. I think Camera Plus on the iPhone also does TIFF support as well. So may I ask one more time on the settings for the iPhone six? You're actually able to go into settings and within Camera uh, the iPhone Camera app, you're able to select TIFF. Oh, no, you'll actually have to you'll actually have to install that uh, camera 645. Oh. And then and then it, and then instead of starting your camera app that or the native camera app, you'll actually start uh, that 645 app. And I do okay. I do keep both of mine on the home screen because I do like the native camera app if I'm doing panoramas. Right. But I just keep them both uh, both on the home screen and then anytime I want to do uh, high high definition, I do it that way. Okay. Yep. I actually give up the. I switched to AT. I switched to Sprint recently, and I give up the iPhone six. I love the image, opt, the uh, optical image stabilization in it. It was just. Uh, I had the six plus, and it was. It was really nice. I am missing that piece of it, but I'm not missing the huge size. <laughs> yeah. Of the five. I understand. Yeah. Yep. Any any more questions out there? We we'll get into some pictures if not. So Robert, why don't why don't why don't we go through these pictures? And uh, there's we have quite a few. Do you want me to click on one in particular to talk about, or I can just uh, I can ask you some. I've got some questions about some of them in particular. Yeah, just you know, fire away, whatever. Okay, you want. okay. So I guess uh, I'll call it documentary. You have a couple of pictures of your of your uh, son here, and he's actually been to our. Uh, our meetups here. So I guess this is probably, we'll talk a little bit about strengths while we're talking about your pictures. One of the strengths of the, of having a camera with you, of course, is, is I'll call it documentary or just candid type of photography. In the old days, everybody called them snapshots, but uh, how, how many, how many pictures of your kids do you have that you simply wouldn't have if you didn't have the camera with you? Oh, yeah. It, let me put it to you like this. Mm -hmm. uh, for my son's 10th birthday, mm -hmm. It took me two years to do this. I went through every picture I had <laughs> mm -hmm. and had to cut it to 1,500. Picture, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There's a Phil Collins song called You Blew My Heart from the Tarzan movie. Yes. So I took it from, I started with the day he was born. He wasn't even five minutes old, and mm -hmm. I already had a picture of him. Yeah, gotcha, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, I, you know, that was 1,500 alone, and mm -hmm. I went through over 10,000 pictures mm -hmm. wow uh, not, yeah. not all of them his but yeah. uh, you know just uh and, and literally i started when he was eight years old and then it was like well this is a better show okay yeah. and then you know i did the whole thing chronological so mm -hmm. from the day he was born till his 10th birthday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh and then i put the whole thing uh the photo slideshow together for that song yeah yeah so yeah the number is in the thousand yeah yeah is... yeah i i did a i'm sorry go ahead no it, yeah. Probably the most photographed person I know. Yeah, yeah. So when I talk to non-photographers and they're trying to figure out uh, whether they should buy a, a real camera or not, uh, I always point out to them that I have an order of magnitude more pictures of my children with my phone than with my camera. Even, even though my son has played soccer in the past and sometimes I would motor drive it, the total number of pictures of my son from a phone was just much more drastic. And then I'll also point out to them if they're like me. My, so my son is 12 and my daughter's 19. 
we had a we had a you know that's when film cameras going out we had a film camera but we have very few pictures of our daughter and you know that's that's just kind of the way it was then but we also point out folks of that so you know it, it's just I, I think that's the strongest strongest aspect is just family journalistic whatever you want to call it just that idea that you have a have a camera and I, I do you think there's any other is there a, is there a stronger or is there a more compelling reason to to be into phone photography than just that documenting you know documenting your children your life it you doesn't have to be children pets or whatever you know whatever stage of life the yeah, person for me, it's kind of the opposite. It's true. I actually have more with the SLR. Oh, do you? Okay. A okay. Lot of, a lot of that had to do because for the longest time, I, I just had a flip phone, and that thing, you know, 640 by 480 pictures. <laughs> a little you know, frustrating. Know, even with the best lighting conditions, it's like you can't do anything with this. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I always, anywhere we go, uh, I, I, I literally have, dating myself again, mm -hmm. I bought this bag that held eight CDs mm -hmm. that I used to take back when I had a CD player in the car. So this bag is also about the perfect size to carry around uh, a, a SLR camera with just mm -hmm. a, you know, like an 18 to you know, 50 lens. Mm -hmm. So literally that thing stays in the bag. And right. uh, I'm going to go somewhere and I'll go grab that. Now, if I'm going to go to an air show or something like that, the full backpack. Right, bag, yeah. I have, filters, mm -hmm. I have you know, mm -hmm. tripod, the whole thing's in the bag. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the, to me, the opposite was true, and that's just because of the phone. But now that I got better phone, I'm mm -hmm. finding that it's, it's starting to become about 50. 50 50 on it yeah yeah can you think of a can you think of any other genre or purpose of the iphone that's a that's even a better better use of it or is that i, I noticed you do quite a bit of landscape uh, which we can we can get into that as well yeah, landscape I, I i seem to be doing more and more of that and mm -hmm. i think a lot of it that has to do we uh we camp more now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we bought a, you know, that little pop-up camper mm -hmm. and we literally took a road trip um uh, Spent 12 days on the road. We we drove all the way to California and back camping. Okay. Uh, you know, went to the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. went to Vegas to see family, went to Hoover mm -hmm. Dam. And, and okay. Basically, the, the end goal was to go to Disneyland. So, yeah, that's the Grand Canyon. Yeah, so okay. This is a, a late afternoon shot. Um, rather interesting. Uh, we in the storm go through the canyon. And, uh, you know, the sunset's coming, the storm mm -hmm. still kind of there. Is sitting over on this branch of just stuff. Uh, this was one where I I took it with the SLR and I turned around and shot it with the cell phone too, just to see mm -hmm. uh, you know the differences. Now, if you, you want self HDR, because I found out it, I could pull that rainbow more. Okay, so the the HDR is was that three or five exposures, or was that purely a software? This was three. Okay, it's three. Okay, okay, excellent. That's a great. That's a great shot. That's an excellent shot. So, it was interesting being there because uh, I was talking to one of the park rangers and they said, you, you know what's sad? And he, he says, it's raining in the canyon. It rains almost every afternoon. And yeah, we're standing here at the rim and there's a barn bay in here because we haven't had a drink. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So every day you watch the storm go through. It was mm. gorgeous. Just, yeah, yeah. I, I spent three days there. And I wish I would have, I would have okay, okay. Uh, I have a question about that. Uh, so I assume your camera apps actually have manual exposure control as well? Or are they, are yes. they shooting? Okay, okay. They, there, there is a little bit uh, like a better camera. I can mm. control the ISO. Okay. Uh, I can bracket the shot a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. You know, for that matter, white balance can be okay. tweaked a little. Okay. Because uh, one of the neat things I forgot to mention this. One of the neat things that I find about a uh, a better camera, they actually you have a live histogram as you look as you're doing the shot. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Because uh, uh, I I find that if I'm in auto mode, I find that the that at least on the iPhone with the 645 app, a shot like this would be very tough to shoot on uh, because it would brighten it up tremendously. But but the app I the app I have does support uh, manual exposure, so that so I could. It sounds arrogant if I could say I can get the same shot, but I could get a similar effect uh, of that with the exposure because with the phone that is and that's one of the things I want to mention and mention to the folks here that if you are if you are using the built-in native app maybe go play with some of these other advanced apps because you can do manual exposure and you can have the you can you can make the creative decisions versus the uh, the camera you know automatically exposing it for you yeah and for that matter even the stock camera stuff uh dig into the settings see, see what's in there uh, yeah, I, yeah. I surprise some of the things my samsung can do even the stock mm. uh you know it did have an hdr 
built into it, but I didn't mm-hmm. like it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it has some other things that people do in sports, mm-hmm. uh, in high speed photography, you can mm-hmm. capture a series of snapshots and basically, you know, like if you had a snowboarder jumping, you could actually put them all in one image and you can see the, yeah. the snow. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, get, get out of the native apps. Yeah. 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 All kinds yeah. of neat stuff. So, yeah. This picture here is Penn Farm. This is up at Cedar Hill State Park. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a historical agricultural center. It's an old farm that's mm-hmm. there. Uh, there's old tractor equipment and all that. Uh, mm-hmm. It's actually uh, a neat place to go shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the day we were there, they were actually uh, photographers up there shooting. Oh. oh, did I lose you? Did we lose you there, Robert? Can everyone hear me still? Yeah, I'm still here. It, is it me or Robert yeah. cutting up? I can hear you, but I'm, I'm still seeing the same picture. It hasn't okay. Are you back, Robert? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. I've got the I've got the windmill picture up. Can everyone see that? Yeah. I still see a lake. You still see a lake? Okay. Yeah. Let me change it again. Yeah, that was strange. I wasn't talking and then you just went black and white. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering if it was me, but it sounded like it was... They said they could see. I, I think the whole thing. Looks uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is Red Rock Canyon, just outside Las Vegas. Okay. And is this uh, is this just uh, is this uh, HDR? Or is this uh, just one exposure? Um. Or do you remember? I think this. I think this one's. Just okay. One. Okay. Okay. I, I yeah. shot half and half there. In mm-hmm. some cases, I shot the one exposure and the HDR. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think, uh, yeah, I think this one was just a regular. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another one. I don't I don't think we looked at this one earlier as well. Yeah, this is the picture I was telling you about where you had sunrise, you, you, uh, you know, just trying to capture. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an HDR image. Right? Okay, okay, very nice. Yeah, this is actually, it's HDR and a little bit of post-processing. I did bring it into a light zone and did a little sharp. Okay, light. okay, gotcha. Uh this one, yeah, that is great. This was uh, this was actually our camp out last week at sunset. If you look at the far end, I was actually on the opposite side of the lake. Uh, mm-hmm. If you look at what appears to be the little color, that's actually all our tents. Okay, okay, yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I shot that one with the phone. I also shot one with the with the SLR, just mm-hmm. zoomed in, so you mm-hmm. get a, a nicer shot of Got the tents. It. Gotcha. Yep. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, have either of you found that uh, within any of these apps that you're talking about that uh, it uh, somehow improves the ability to use the uh, uh, on-camera zoom lens? Because I know within the uh, native app for iPhone 6, uh, the, the zoom completely just destroys the image. Uh, so yeah, zoom, yeah, zoom for the most part on the phones is a, it says digital zoom. It's not an optical, uh, and it yeah. basically the, the software just interpolates that and try and you know basically winds up expanding. It's kind of like when you go in Photoshop, take an image, start expanding it. Uh, that, that's kind of what it's doing. It, it's it's making zoom. The, the best thing to do is set the camera or your cell phone camera, set it to the highest resolution possible, then go into some sort of post processing and do some cropping. Uh, and uh, you'll you'll get better results that way. They'll they'll be a little sharper. Um, but that, that's what I wound up doing. Uh huh. Do you also find that shooting at the lowest uh, possible ISO setting improves the image quality? Yeah, you wind up with a little less noise. Okay. Yeah, I. I um, it, it's kind of a fine line there because sometimes you yeah. want that that shot and the lighting is just not going to allow you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in, in some cases I've taken some shots where they are a little noisy. I've gone and done a little noise reduction. It's not perfect. But for for a print, it became acceptable, or for you know posting to the blog, it became acceptable at that point. So, uh, you, this is one of those where you, you take the shot, take a couple of them, and then you know go into post processing and see what you can do. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I, since I shoot so much uh, music, I'm I'm not really sensitive to noise. I'll I'll put up a lot with it. So if I'm fo- especially if I'm photographing my son moving around, I would much rather, unless I'm looking for an artistic effect, I would much rather freeze his action. Then, and I'll give up the I'll give up the ISO for that. 
but yeah, the 5S, the noise isn't just, uh, I mean, it's much better than the 3GS, but uh, uh, you do see that, you know, any 300, 320, you start seeing the, you start seeing the noise on it M much more because my other camera is a, a, a 5D Mark III, so I can shoot at 3200 and not see any noise. So it does stick out, but I usually, I usually don't let it bother me. If it's, if it's a good picture, otherwise I, I keep it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the same thing. I, I did just a few shots that I okay, it's a little noisy, but you know what? That it, I like the overall image. Mm -hmm. I like how it turned out, so mm -hmm. I, I'm willing to live with it. And and frankly, lots of times, but if you send them the print, they turn out pretty nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'll jump in here and talk about some of mine here. This isn't one of my finer iPhone pictures, but the reason I included it was this uh, shows the difference in the technology. I actually shot this with the iPhone 3GS. And this was pretty well lit, but even with it being pretty well lit, you just couldn't get the detail. I meant to go look up technically what it was. I, I want to say it was an eight megapixel camera, but it might have been smaller. But the you know the the light performance on it just wasn't that good. However, I did I did get into phone photography with it, and you can actually see here there's actually a little motion blur even there. So, you know, it, Apple would do the you know one fifth of a second to to get the shot there, and you know I couldn't hold it steady even even with it being such a small sensor. But that's really what that's for. What I really love with the with the iPhone photography, which I don't I don't really do much of this with my Canon camera, is I love these photos that kind of go abstract or soft or you know silhouette type stuff. And I guess the reason I like that is because it kind of hides some of the limitations of phone photography. You know the ISO ratings don't come into play. Uh, the colors are are simple. Although I'm, I must say the dynamic range of the cameras are just crazy now. There, I read I read somewhere that the last generation of cameras are now the dynamic range is now as high as the original uh, Canon Rebel SLR, right on the dynamic range. So it, it's you know it's much better. And the same same idea here is you know it's uh, uh, simple colors. Uh, the composition is a little bit more sophisticated here, but you got the reflection and. And so it, you know, it's just kind of, it's taking advantage of the small sensor because, the, you know, the depth of field is, is pretty much infinite on most of these, but it also, you know, avoids some of the ISO issues, uh, you know, because, because with the can with my SLR, I could, I could have shot this the way it looked. I could have, you know, you could have actually saw the trucks and that type of thing, but I, I really love the photography that does that kind of stuff. Of course, I also, I don't do street photography with my SLR per se, or, you know, lifestyle or I don't know if it's lifestyle whatever you would call this type of thing but with the phone I can I can kind of be sneaky and and do this kind of stuff uh, a lot more than I can with the SLR and then just like my just like my SLR I'll, I'll photograph anything these are some some plants here and actually you can kind of see some of the ISO noise there on that one I don't know if it'll see if it'll carry through here I guess I can't get it up there in Lightroom and then, of course, I didn't put any food, picture, food pictures, but here's just the one, you know, I saw a bike and take a picture, so I'll do all kinds of snapshots like that with it. And let's see, our subject was actually strengths on that kind of thing, what, what it's good for. I guess, Robert, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges. Uh, Roger already brought up the, uh, the ISO uh, uh, setting. I guess, uh, I guess one, of the, one of the other challenges... Uh, which we kind of alluded to with the with the phone photography, and I actually have a fix for it, but I don't care with it. Is actually zooming in. I actually have an external lens for my iPhone that I don't carry with me most of the time. I keep saying I need to put it in the dash of the car, but I would say that yeah. you know for for zooming, you know the iPhones just aren't aren't that good. Uh, they most of them, I guess I don't know of any of them that actually have built-in optical zooms, but you know, everything out there, uh, even in a lot of video cameras. It's all digital. Yeah, uh, yeah. Digital zooming is just, uh, yeah, it'll do the trick. Yeah. You know, the, mm -hmm. Most consumer level type mm -hmm. stuff that's probably acceptable, but mm -hmm. uh, nothing just beats optical zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, if there's something you really want to crop out of the picture, my suggestion is just bump up that uh, megapixel as much as you can, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know, crop the shot down in post production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess another genre that's a little bit challenging, or well, it is challenging as well with phone photography would be sports type things. Uh, yes. 
if it's not bright daylight and you can't get close to the action, uh, you know, it's not, it's just, it's, it's challenging for us. I usually won't even try it because it's usually just too frustrating uh, to do, you know, and you can do some documentary. You know, I've, I, I'm, I went from work straight to a soccer game or something and all I had was my phone. So, you know, I try to do some documentary type stuff with the players around the coach and that kind of stuff. But so that's, that's one of the areas I wouldn't recommend uh, or, or it's just not really suited for it. Can you think of any other areas that where it's just really not suited? Phones just not there either technologically or, or it just, it's size. Not so much of a genre, but something that becomes a challenge at times is just being able to see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, you're in a, a, like last weekend I was outside and you know, I had I, something that I was shooting, oh, some geese. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to shot because I was fairly close. I wanted to play around with the phone, but the biggest thing I found is, all right, I got the sun behind me. Right? <laughs> I can't see this. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So, you know, that, that, that by far I think is the biggest challenge of, of shooting with the phone. I mean, I, I even contemplated that how could I build a hood? Uh, for, yeah. Phone? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I saw someone, I saw a Kickstarter or something where someone was actually trying uh, polarized yeah. sunglasses. I don't know if that ever caught, off, caught on or if they ever got funded. They were trying, and I didn't know if it was just gimmicky as well to... You know, trying exactly. trying to address it because that is ironic because they the phones do you give them enough light they do excellent photos, but then they but then you can't see the uh, LCD screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, portraits, close up things are great. Anything mm -hmm. that's at a distance, uh, that's when it really becomes a challenge. Challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yeah. Sometimes I find that you know, you're in a crowded situation, then you just can't drag out your SLR. It's just easy to. Mm -hmm. Take that cell phone, reach above the person in front of you, and, and just you know, take the shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do you, uh, do you guys have any any other questions? I think we've I think we've probably put you to sleep out there. <laughs> Adina, did you have any well, questions, or Roger? I, well, I just I agree totally about the inability to see the uh, uh, the screen in the daylight. That's the most frustrating part of using the camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I really haven't found any fixes for that either. I've thought about a hood as well, but mm -hmm. uh, at, at this point, I haven't really come up with anything. So I'll be interested in seeing what you guys maybe find out or come up with in the future for dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hood. The, the biggest challenge on a hood is going to be is the different shapes and sizes of the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Apple. Apple is a little more standardized in that their shapes tend to be you know, fairly standardized mm -hmm. across the models. When you get into Android. The sky is the limit. Yeah, these things. yeah. Uh, and, and actually, that for programming for Android, that's one of the biggest challenges. Is as many screen uh, sizes. And when I first started uh, doing some programming for Android, that was the biggest oh, challenge. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. Finding something to auto adjust and then you know adjust everything accordingly. And that's, mm -hmm. It was a mess. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's a tough area. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see what mm -hmm. what can come out in, in that shape or form because a lot of phones you can. Uh, you know, at least with the stock uh, camera software, uh, you can't assign either the volume button, the home button, or something to be your trigger. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you build a hood to where it just partially covers the screen, where you got just enough to, uh, for the buttons exposed to hit it. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, you know, right, on the Android side, every phone is different, and that, that becomes a challenge. So, uh, yeah. you know, seeing how it, I don't see a one size fits all type hood, but mm -hmm. maybe something will hit the market. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, maybe wearing a black hoodie uh, might come in handy. You just sort of hold, yeah. it. hold it up underneath yeah, it. Yeah, actually, it, it's funny that you bring that up because you know what actually just works for me is wearing a hat. It, yeah, that helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah baseball yeah, cap. Because yeah. I, at least with the hat, I can block a little bit. But, and then, yeah. uh, you know, when I take the shot, like when I'm doing some of the HDR stuff, I take the mm -hmm. shot and I, I try to look down to, to uh, do the little post processing. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it sometimes. So what I found mm -hmm. is, okay, if I put a hat and look down, it blocks just enough of the light to where uh, I can yeah. see the screen. Can, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, Dana, did you have any questions for us? You can always go to oh. one of these three D printers and design your own. There you go, custom fit for your phone. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It's ironic. I I'm looking at one right now. I just need to get the heating element fixed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you you have one. You have one at work. Three D printer. Or? Uh, no, I I was given one. Oh, nice. And, yeah. uh, but the it was partially assembled. Okay. And it's it's one of these. It's called a ref wrap, which is, is, is a build-yourself kit. Yes, sir. Uh, and anyhow, this particular model, the 
the they went to a newer one and the documentation just kind of fell off the face of the earth. Oh. I couldn't find any complete documentation. So, mm-hmm. uh, well, I knew just enough about electronics to hang myself, and that's <laughs> what I did. I was looking at color coded wires, and I'm going, okay, red's usually hot lead, black is usually mm-hmm. ground. Mm-hmm. We'll wire it that way. Well, <laughs> the heating element has two red wires coming out of it. Oh. So I shorted out the heat sensor. Oh, great. Yeah. So basically, the heating element kicks on and it just mm-hmm. goes. There's mm-hmm. no turning at all. So that, what it boils down to is i got to find someone that can replace the chip for me on the board. Wow. And, uh, that's, as soon as I get that, then yeah, i got a little toy to play with. Yeah, then you have yeah. another expensive yeah. hobby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, thank Our schools are getting it. Uh, we, we actually, I've installed several of them in the school. Yeah. The kids are doing yeah. 3D printing now. Yeah, that's going to be the next big thing. That's gonna that's gonna change manufacturing. Yeah, Richardson Library has one. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna get to the point they're saying where. You... Wow, that, I wonder how they handle that because some parts can be hours to print. Yeah. Well, they they queue up the job and mm. pay for the uh, the plastic material that is used. So you submit your job and it they'll print it for you. And Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. I have to. I have to go by and check that out. Excellent. Yeah. Well, guys, appreciate everybody uh, showing up here. Uh, sorry about the technical issues. I, I think that's just kind of uh, kind of goes with the territory. I, th- what I did learn, I think, is next time we'll have a pre-meeting at 15 minutes before, and then we can we can help folks to try to get in if that's uh, if that's needed. If you guys have any suggestions for either improving it technically or topics, and of course, uh, you know, either shoot me a message or a text or post it just in the group. Hopefully, I'll say post it to the group. Uh, yeah. We can all chime in. And, yeah. You know, it might be something I might have ran across. I do a lot of stuff in the district, and we always, I, I look around and see. I, at one point, we had a video conferencing system, and I'll mm. see if that's still around. Maybe the next go around, we can use that. that yeah, 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 yeah. I know years ago we had it, but I don't know if we ever kept it. I know like a, we, a, a education seems to be steering a lot towards. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think the thing now is hang out Google Hangouts in the district. So. Yeah, well, Google may be the way to go, and we, we might just have to help folks get a, get their Google account set up and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but anyway, okay. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you very much too. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. I, I, I hope you all, you all got something. I'm ahead of it. Yeah. Not, you know, next club meeting, don't hesitate to stop and ask. Okay, thanks again. Appreciate it, guys. Okay, good night. Catch you later. Catch you later, Robert. Oh, you're welcome. Good night. Good night. Ron, thanks for putting this together. Oh, yeah, my pleasure, man. Glad you glad you, glad you, you were the uh, beta tester with us. <laughs> we'll be we'll be doing some more. Yeah. Yep, excellent. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, you bet. All right. Good evening, sir. You too, man. See you. You are the last party in the conference.